For this video, we wanted to introduce you guys to Kyle Reeves. We met him while we're here on the island of Key West for the past few months, and he runs a really cool organization that I'm gonna let him explain as we're genuinely curious about uh, who he is and what he does, and we thought you guys might be too. Yeah, thanks Ryan. So what we do, we're called One Piece, as you can see under my shirt, this is our company logo, but what we do is we clean up the ocean, so we sell t-shirts to fund beach cleanups. Every t-shirt we sell funds the removal of a pound of trash out of the water or off the coastline here in Key West. And currently we've pulled close to 3,000 pounds out of the water within the past year. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it is a lot of trash. Uh, there's a crisis going on in the ocean. If, if you didn't know, I know you travel around, you see the plastic floating around in the water. But basically there's 16 billion pounds of trash that make it into the ocean each year and we're trying to negate that cause and trying to clean it up the best we can. So how do you get started in this? Like, how do you go from just like a normal person to you know, like, you know what? I want to spend a significant portion of my time and money working on, on this kind of project. Yeah, how I got started, it's kind of interesting. Before I started, I didn't know one thing about the ocean. I came from the backwoods of Kentucky. Okay. And what we did is I moved to Fort Myers, Florida where we started the organization and we saw how much plastic was on the shorelines when we went and did a beach cleanup and it just really rubbed me the wrong way. It kind of put a passion behind it and that's what we're doing. We're just trying to passionately clean up the ocean and get get out there and do something about it. Us sailing like in the Bahamas and just you know beaches that completely uninhabited, there'll still be trash on the uh, seaward side of the beach almost. In, uh, invariably there'll be trash. Down here you can walk into any mangrove in the Keys and you will literally find at least something. It's just not one thing, it's hundreds of things. The main problem is microplastics. So you start out with a plastic bag, blows in the ocean, and then it gets torn up by the sun through photogeneration, or it gets torn up by the currents or a boat prop running it over and it gets turned into smaller and smaller pieces of plastic. And what happens is animals will eat that plastic and then it goes up the food chain and winds up right on your plate. And that's, that's the real problem, my perspective. I don't think we know enough about what it's doing to our food mm -hmm. and the harm that it could be doing to us through the toxins through the plastic that's going into the fish. For example, when I was out on the water one time, we saw a manatee. There's these seagrass beds, they just kind of float around. Mm -hmm. We see this manatee come up on it, starts munching on the seagrass. I just thought they ate it off the floor, but they actually eat a majority of it floating on the water. Huh. And within that, you could see all the little plastics that are stuck in the bed and he's just eating them eating them, and not knowingly ingesting the plastic unfortunately and we don't eat manatees obviously but what other fish are doing that if everybody reduced their plastic consumption and just tried to stop using plastic to where we could eventually get away from the use of plastic I think that's how the average consumer could really make a difference going out and doing a beach cleaning up is just a preventative measure to what's already happened. So we need to actually take measures further to prevent the plastic from heading into the water. Quote, uh, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. It's kind of the same thing. Something we're really big on is educating people on how they can actually reduce their plastic consumption because several other alternatives that you can do to reduce your plastic. Is there like a top five? Like if, if somebody's gonna like month by month reduce their plastic consumption, we just give them a simple list. What should they hit? Simple list. I know everybody's big on the straws, but we did a survey for a couple days on straw to bottle cap ratio of what we found, and we found 18 bottle caps in the water compared to every straw. If you really want to stop using plastic water bottles, and you could use like a steel turbis, something like that, to reduce your plastic. An interesting one that I just did is there's your sponges in your sink. Mm -hmm. They're made out of polyester foam or the sponge in your shower, like the loofah you use that's made out of polyester. It's all plastic. You use it for a couple weeks and then throw it away. Yeah. So something you can use is we use organic sponges. So down here in the Keys, like they have, the actual yeah, they have sponge farms. Yeah. And then there's also like an eggplant. I can't think of the name off the top of my head, but it's basically an organic plant that people use. And you can use to wash your body or wash your dishes in the sink instead of just using your polyester sponge. That's that's my number one because everybody uses a sponge, a plastic bristle brush, and then they throw them away in a couple weeks after they're done with them. Third thing would be Ziploc bags and cling wrap. There are companies that make biodegradable cling wrap that's coated in beeswax and it's just as good as using regular cling wrap and it can preserve your vegetables. A fourth thing would be grocery bags. 
I mean, that's a simple, simple one. I know everybody says I forgot my grocery bags <laughs> at home, and they just they don't they don't ever put them in their car. Just put them in your car and just take them to the store. Or if you forget them, use uh, paper paper bags if you have to. But yeah. definitely reusable bags are the way to go. So, so if we stop using them, they would stop making them. Yeah, it all comes down to the yeah. the bottom line, the dollar. Whoever's making money, they're going to use the plastic. The fifth one, something that a lot of people don't think of, is your soap you use on your hair. All the bottles that you use mm. in your actual shower. Uh, we just started using bars of shampoo. So you can scrub it in your hand and then scrub it on your hair. And now you don't use a plastic bottle for shampoo anymore. You can buy bars of soap instead of using body wash. You, you can really do a lot in your bathroom to change yeah. how much plastic you use. If you, if you go inside your cabinets you, and really think about how much you And then I, I'm gonna say a sixth one because something I always do when I go shopping at the store, I try to buy things that are not in plastic. So this is one of our shirts, Brian. Our One Piece, this is our logo. So One Piece was founded on the One Piece a Day movement, <laughs> which is where if everybody at least picked up one piece of trash a day in their daily commute, they could negate the amount of plastic that went into the ocean. But this is the back that we did, a sea turtle, which I know everybody loves sea turtles, and that's a big part that we're trying to save are the sea turtles and other marine organisms. And then this is our second one with just our logo for the more casual wear, where it's just gray with the One Piece logo. Nothing on the back though. But yeah, you can find our shirts at onepiecegear.com. That's O-N-E-P-E-A-C-E-G-E-A-R.com. And we also have Instagram and Facebook where you can find us. It's one.piece.llc for each of our Instagram and Facebook. So when you make your purchase, we actually physically go out. We pay employees to go out and pick up your pound of trash. So. Once we get the funding, we pay our employees, they go out, pick up the trash, however many shirts we sell each month, and we try to do continuous cleanups even when we don't have funding because it's still a passion, and even without the funding, we'll take our own personal time to just go out and do cleanups because it's not, it's not about the money, it's about saving the ocean. The t-shirt sales just fund the cause that we do. So it sounds like you guys are actually making some headway here. You're making progress. Your organization is growing and people buying yeah. the shirts and like there's an interest out there, right? Like yeah, there, there's a huge interest. So we do a lot of events just trying to get the word of us out there. But when 16 billion pounds go in every year, we can't just sell 16 billion shirts every year and then just go out and pull out the trash just because yeah. people don't want to stop using plastic. Do you go around and do like education for kids and stuff? I feel like that'd be a good avenue we, to like help. Yeah, we've been thinking about getting into speaking at high schools, colleges, middle schools, and we're eventually going to go down that avenue, post our email link in this if anybody sees it and wants us to come out and speak within Florida, we'd, we'd love the opportunity. Yes, yeah, so I, I know. So we make shirts that kind of help support our channel, but that's just to help support us. They do shirts for a much more worthy cause, and we just, you know, after meeting Kyle, I kind of wanted to bring him on here, give him an opportunity for some more people to hear what he's doing and, you know, bit by bit, make the world a better place. That sounds cheesy, <laughs> but like, it's better than making it a worse place, right? Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs>